So guys, a lot happened this week and we're going to talk about the top news stories that you might have missed but definitely need to hear about, starting off with one that many of you may be happy about. Windows Vista is officially dead. It's been around since 2007 and Microsoft is finally next month switching off all support for it. So that means no more security patches, specifically with Internet Explorer 9, you're not going to get any more security patches and a lot of software developers are therefore going to stop supporting it completely, which means if you're still using Windows Vista for some reason, you might want to switch. And this isn't really a surprise. Microsoft is known to have about a 10 year life cycle for all of their operating systems. But interestingly, Windows Vista is probably one of the worst most least popular ones that they've ever released. In fact, right now, only 0.78% of people on the internet use it according to some measurements that they've been doing. And somehow it's even less popular than Windows XP, which obviously came before it. Somehow it's still popular. 8.45% of people still use Windows XP, even though support was stopped for it back in 2014. Although that is a little bit more easy to understand because Windows XP was so popular, a lot of businesses and uh, like countries that don't really have really advanced infrastructure still use XP. So it's kind of interesting to see that such a lower number use Vista, which is only the next version, it's even newer. And it's especially funny because in the measurements, more people use Windows XP than 8.1. I mean, people really hated 8.1. And like I said, this isn't really a surprise. Microsoft does, of course, drop support after so many years of an operating system being out. And of course, they want to push more and more towards Windows 10. That's why they released it for free. And eventually, they're probably just going to have Windows. It's not even going to be called Windows 10 anymore. It's just going to be Windows because the new system they use with Windows 10 is the operating system is kind of modular, which means they can update major components of the operating system without having to make you install like a whole new disk's worth of stuff, like reformatting your computer. All the stuff can be just upgraded in place. So it's just going to be one version of Windows where each individual part gets updated over time. But yeah, regardless, if you're still using an older version of Windows, just take note that they are probably going to stop support for it. And it is really, really stupid to use a version of Windows that isn't supported anymore because that's when the hackers have a field day. They know that they can find out an exploit for that operating system. And there's no way you're going to be able to defend against it because Microsoft stopped patching it. All right, next news story is going to be great for you gamers, especially those who play PlayStation. Sony announced that they're going to be allowing PlayStation Now to now use PS4 games. So if you're not familiar, this is important because PlayStation Now is like a streaming service, almost like a Netflix for games with PlayStation, but it only supported PS3 games, like older games, so you could play those older games on your PS4, but it also let you stream them to your PC. So now that they're letting you use PS4 games, they're going to allow current titles to be played on PC as well as PS4. But of course, the problem with it being rendered elsewhere and streamed to your computer is you're going to get a lot of latency. You know, it's only at 720p to save bandwidth, so it's a crappy resolution. And it is 60 FPS, but still, it's not going to look as good as if you played it on the computer, especially with the compression plus the 720p. It might be okay for casual games. If you don't really care about quality, you just want to play the games, it might be fine to get the latest games especially. And it is $13 a month though, which isn't going to be as good, I think, as Xbox Game Pass, which they announced recently on Xbox, which is kind of like the same thing, except it's not streaming. So with Xbox Game Pass, which I talked about before, it lets you actually download the games on your hard drive and play it. Anyone's in the library. So it's a lot better than streaming because it's as if you bought the game. But on PlayStation Now, you just have to stream it, which I've never really been a fan of. All right, moving on. Another cool thing happened with AMD. You guys know that a while back they released, well, not even a while back, a couple weeks ago, they released Ryzen 7, which is their top of the line new CPU series. And then, of course, they are now announcing the Ryzen 5 line, which is kind of like the next tier down because they're kind of doing an analogous Ryzen 7 is like the i7 with Intel, Ryzen 5 is like i5, and they announced four processors in the Ryzen 5 line. These are the 1600X at the top. Then below that is the 1600, not the X, then there's 1500X, 
and below that is the 1400. And these processors range in number of cores from four to six cores, which means eight to 12 threads, and they're actually very affordable. For example, the 1600X is only about $250. AMD at this point is definitely giving Intel a run for their money. They're creating all these CPUs that are pretty dang affordable, and they're at equal or better equivalent to Intel. Of course, Intel typically right now seems to be having an edge in the single processor or single thread performance that is, which is more important for gaming, but for other applications, AMD is looking like a pretty good choice for a processor. And even still, it's gonna be forcing Intel to lower prices as well. Also, another news in regards to computer components, if you're thinking about upgrading to an SSD drive, you might wanna do so sooner than later because it turns out that demand for flash storage is going up, as it should, because it's way better. However, the supply is not really able to catch up, which means there's a dramatic increase in prices right now for SSDs and flash storage in general. This has a few consequences. First of all, of course, that higher capacity SSDs are gonna be starting to rise in price, and also, it means that there will be less availability for increasing storage capacity if you're especially going to be buying a new bought computer that has it included. Because if a manufacturer like MSI is putting out a laptop, then they want to be able to charge as low as they can, which will cause customers to obviously buy more of them. But if they have to get a one terabyte SSD in there and it costs them twice as much as it used to, well, they're not going to want to increase the price that much so instead, they're gonna be putting lower capacity SSDs into new computers, and if you wanna get a bigger one, you're just gonna to have to foot the price and get one yourself. So don't be surprised if you see only 128 or 250 gigabyte SSDs in these new laptops. If you want more, you're gonna to have to spend it yourself, and if you're looking to upgrade soon, you might wanna do so before the prices rise even more, or at least until they can catch up with demand. All right, next up, we got Pandora. Lots of you know this. They are actually launching a new Pandora Premium service, which is yet another music streaming service supposed to take on Spotify. There's so many right now, it's getting ridiculous. But the idea is, you know, Pandora originally, it was kind of like a radio where you didn't get to pick the songs you played. You could skip them, but there was only a limited number of skips. Now they're kind of doing a thing where it's gonna be on-demand music. You like a song, it goes into a playlist, you can play them but it's not that much different than any of the other million services out there, I think. I mean, what, you got Google Play, you got Apple Music, you got Spotify, Xbox Music, all of these out there, they all pretty much do the same thing, and it's just another $10 a month thing to spend money on music. I mean, I think they're kind of late to the party with this. I don't know how many people they expect to get who aren't already paying for Spotify or Apple Music or one of those, and they're definitely not gonna get them to pay an extra $10 a month if it's doing the same thing that they're already getting. But I guess the one thing that Pandora supposedly has going for them is their whole proposition is that they have the best categorization and recommendations for music. You know, judging by the stuff that you like, they really know what kind of music you like, and that's been their thing from the start. So I mean, I guess if they can keep that going and keep it way better than the other subscription services, maybe they can handle it, but I don't know. I think a lot of people already know what they like and they're not gonna move over, especially considering right now it's an invite only beta, so you can't even sign up if you wanted to. Next story is something that's a bit disturbing actually. It turns out that Microsoft put ads for OneDrive, their cloud storage service, into Windows 10, directly into the Explorer. People have said that when they were just using Windows Explorer, at the top of the window, they had an ad pop up for OneDrive. And it's like, oh, learn more. Here's a service that you can use. Here's the price. And it's like, are you kidding me? This is my operating system. You're embedding ads right into the operating system. What a joke. At least right now, you can disable it. If you go to the file options in the Explorer, then view, that's show sync provider. If you uncheck that, it won't show them anymore, but I think this is a pretty big slippery slope. I mean, if they're gonna start off with putting ads in, I don't think they're gonna stop, and it's just gonna get worse. And especially, I could see them not allowing you to disable it in the future, at least for maybe the home version, like they kinda do with the automatic updates with the home version, you can't stop them. With Pro, at least, you can. And for the ads, I personally have not seen any, but again, I do have the Pro version, so I don't know if they're only doing it in home, which is kinda 
you know, a shame really. But what I think is more disturbing is how hard they're pushing these subscription services, not just OneDrive, but Office 365. Oh, they don't want you buying Windows or Microsoft Word anymore. They want you to pay for the service, so you pay every month for it. And I'm just worried they're gonna start doing this with Windows itself. I mean, with Windows 10 being the last version of Windows, where instead of releasing major updates to Windows that they sell every few years, they're just gonna instead upgrade it incrementally in stages and it'll just be one version of Windows continuously. I could actually see if it gets bad enough where they start charging a subscription fee for Windows. Because if you think about it, they stopped releasing new versions every few years where they can sell it, make a bunch of money on the operating system, and then after 10 years or whatever, release more versions and make money that way. If they lost that revenue stream, they're just gonna have the OEM manufacturers paying licenses, but for users, you know, to make that money up, they're gonna either have to get enough customers for their subscription services or start pay charging subscription for Windows itself, which is kind of a problem. I hope they don't do it, but they might in the future. I would not be surprised as bad as that is. All right, finally, Amazon is making the Alexa Assistant available through their app on the iPhone, through the Amazon app. Now you can have Amazon Alexa right on your phone. So you don't need to have an Echo device. It's right through the Amazon app. You allow it to have access to your microphone and then it responds. So this is obviously directly competing with Siri, Google Assistant, and all those. Now there's no word of when they're gonna release it on Android. It's only on iPhone right now, which honestly, give me a break, Amazon. You know, what the hell are you doing? Android is way more popular than iPhone. Why would you release it on the smaller operating system? I hate it when companies do this. They release it exclusively on iPhone, like, oh, it's the more hip one. Give me a break. You're gonna get more customers on the frickin' Android version. Enough ranting aside, though, I am actually legitimately kinda getting worried about all these assistants. I mean, yeah, it's convenient, but if you think about it, I mean, how many assistants do we have now? They're all constantly listening to you. I mean, they all require a wake word, which means that they're listening to you 24-7 for that wake word, and of course, supposedly, they don't do anything unless they hear the wake word. They're not sending any audio anywhere. But, you know, especially with the CIA leaks coming out, it makes you wonder. Right now with Cortana, you got um, the Google Assistant, you got Alexa now. It's like, how many microphones do we have listening to us all the time? Kind of weird, actually. But I guess that's just something we all have to decide on, whether we want the convenience or the privacy concerns. You gotta pick one. So that's it for this week's news. If you guys wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can click on those even if you're on a phone. Highly suggest it. If you wanna subscribe, I make new videos three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Be sure to subscribe. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks for watching, as usual. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.